Okay, today we're going to talk about the relationship between the works cited and the in-text citations. The works cited and the in-text citations, to understand them, it's important to understand the theory underneath these conventions. Both the works cited and the in-text citations are designed for the usability of the reader. So, in order to understand the theory of documentation, it's important for a paper writer to put themselves in the shoes of the reader. So, writers need to have empathy for their readers in order to properly understand the theory of documentation. We must imagine a reader who is looking to judge and evaluate the writer's sources. Even though as a writer, one may not have a lot of experience reading in such a critical way, this is in fact how reading is done in academic settings. Readers in academic settings are skeptical about what writers write. Such readers are also hunting for information. Thus, they may need to investigate a writer's source material. That is why the works cited and the in-text citations are so important. The work cited is designed for the reader. It is designed for ease of use of the reader. So here we have a sample MLA paper, which I retrieved from the MLA.org website. So here we have the work cited. Now, APA documentation, all the same principles apply, just the conventions are a little bit different. So, but the work cited is designed for the reader, and that's why the work cited uses a hanging and here you see the hanging indent and we will notice that the hanging indent is the opposite of the way a paragraph is indented. So a paragraph, in a paragraph the first line of the paragraph is indented and then all the subsequent lines uh, come over to the margin. Now for the works cited it's the opposite. The first line of the works cited entry is not indented and all the subsequent lines of the works cited entry are indented. The reason for this is so that the reader can easily scan down the works cited list and find a, a work cited that they saw in the body of the paper. That's also why it's critically important that the work cited be listed in alphabetical order. If they aren't listed in alphabetical order, then the reader won't be able to quickly find the sources. So remember, the work cited is designed for the reader. It is designed for ease of use of the reader. Work cited pages are confusing enough as they are, so it is crucially important that no matter who creates the work cited, every writer's work cited needs to look identical and conform to the MLA conventions. Please study examples to see how a work cited must be formatted and or read the MLA guidelines. The work cited has a special relationship with the sources it lists and how they are cited in the text. In-text citation usually refers to the actual sources that are cited in the body of the paper. So here we have the body of the paper and I see some in-text citations. I see a page number. I see an author's name. Um, I, I'm skimming up here to see some more. I see another parenthetical reference with a page number. And I can look through here and see that sources were cited throughout the paper. So uh, what a person does to check their work is they make sure that everything listed in the work cited appears in the body of the paper and vice versa. It's like the work cited and the in-text citations are just inextricably connected to each other. They have a close connection that centers on the first word in each work cited citation. So as I'm looking at this paper, I would expect and uh, the find function can be used in Word as well, but let's say that I want to check my work here or check someone else's work. 
Uh, I will use Find. This is a PDF, so I'm using Adobe. Um, Coppola is the first one here. So let's go and look in the paper and see if we can find Coppola. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So here we see, we see an in-text citation with Coppola. So we know that that's correct. Ironman. Let's see if we can find Ironman. Ironman. Okay. And we have the work cited entry, and we see it cited, oh, a couple times, three or four times, two or three or four times in the paper. Okay, good. Um, let's just skip down here and randomly try MacMahan. MacMahan. Okay, let's see if we can find it. There's MacMahan, and there we see him cited a couple times in the paper. Very good. Okay. The problem would be if we search for something and we don't find it. That would be a problem. Um, I'm looking for an example where there isn't an author and well this paper won an award and so it looks like there's authors for everything. When there isn't an author for a source that is troubling in itself because whoever wrote it should be willing to take credit for it or should want to. but. If we don't have the author, then we go with the title. So then we would look for the title um, to be cited in the body of the paper. But in this work cited, every single source has an author. And so any other information, uh, any of the title information or the year or anything like that, that's completely optional to put in the body of the paper. But what is not acceptable is to put just say the title when memory speaks. Let's just say uh, uh, the writer of the paper put uh, according to the article when memory speaks. That is incorrect because remember the work cited is designed for the reader. It's not convention and it isn't permissible to um, set a paper up so that the reader has to hunt through all the works cited entries to try to figure out which citation goes with what in-text citation. So um, just be sure that whatever is sticking out here with the hanging indent, um, and in this case, in every single one of these sources, there's an author, so every single one of these authors' last names, at minimum, will appear in the body of the paper. Just want to make sure that that's the source that is the word that has to be cited in the body of the paper. So that's the relationship between the work cited.